Back engineers to the Marm OS tutorial series and today we're going to talk about hydraulic arm. In this episode we're going to go over the functionality and how to set up one of these beefy little rigs. I mean look at this, this is so cool right? I mean this this has some serious lifting power. But before we do anything let's let's look at this, let's just see how this is right fast. Zoom out here a bit. Oh, yeah, that is super smooth right there. By the way, this example is from the author himself. It is up on his uh, Steam Workshop. There will be a link below in the description to this particular example. And it is actually the example we're going to be using today to go over the mechanics behind the hydraulic system. Now, looking at this right here, it is slightly a little bit daunting when you look at it. You see free, free rotor, tangents joints and all this and when you look at in the guide you get a better understanding of what is going on you get lost for one free rotor that's free ro free rotor one is tail free rotor two is head and the head tail and joint section here is what makes up the entire hydraulic area the rotors used in this are actually free sprinting free bending I can't talk today the Oof, it's, it's, it's been a long day for me. Now, to get these tangents and normals, he kind of explains it here from the joint to the rotor. So if we go down six to here and then over two, we now have the tangent for six and two. But what rules govern that? Because up here we have a tangent for zero. As you can see, it comes up four blocks. So why is this a zero? And this a two. Well, this was some of the things that when I was looking at this, this is what personally confused me and what prompted me to start making this series on Marm OS. Uh, let's spin around here to this one that I have set up here a little different than the one we have over there. Because what he shows is how to do a hydraulic lift, but he doesn't really show how to make it spin. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this beast spin. Now, to get the tangent, or rather the tangent one number, we know that it is on this line. So we know that the first rotor in the operation is the tail, which is here. And we know that this is the joint, and we know that this is the head. So for tangent one and normal one, we want to start from joint to tail. Now, as you can see, our build area comes over two spaces and up six spaces. So now we know where we can start counting. So from the rotor, we go down six because this is actually on the plane of this rotor. So this connecting block here becomes zero. That leaves one block, two blocks for the rotor. So in this little L shape, we know that the block that connects these points is always the zero. And this is how we will get the tangent and the normal from here on out. Now up here, we know that this is the block connected to this section. Why would there not be a normal two here? Well, that's because this and this rotor are not offset. If we go in a straight line, we go from rotor to rotor. So that makes it on the same plane, so there's no blocks to count. That's why we get zero. Because here, if we go from rotor, well, we've hit our zero block. That means this is offset. The only way this would differ for this part is if this was offset. And nine times out of 10, you will never have a normal two slot with any number other than zero. But should you have some type of offset, for example, another set of pistons that would go this way to make a scissor, whoops, a scissor action in a way, and you had to bring this piston over, or sorry, this rotor over, then it would be offset. But as long as the rotors are in line with each other, the normals will always be zero. So now that we've got the counting out of the way, let's move over to this rotor, to this setup here. This is the one that functions. 
Now, we're going to take a quick look at the code. We have our value. Actually, let's 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 go back over here. I want to go over everything of all the values in one go. Now, the next set from this block, remember, down here to this block is the arm definition, the hydraulic part. For our spinny spinny rotor, we have one Z, negative one Y. Because we are, our axis is facing this way, as donated by the zero on the rotor. And Z is up or down, so that gives us one. Positive Y is to the left. But we're in negative y. So for this portion of the solid here, we have d1, negative 1. Now let's move to the solid for the arm portion. We have two pistons. The solid is a 2. The author uses 3 in his example. It's not clarified, but there's one section that talks about different sizes. So I'm assuming that this tip and the tip of this one down here counts towards the solid count i don't do that i prefer a more simple approach and so far everything up to a four piston extension works just fine by calling it a four uh you know by counting just the piston so this would be a two next we have the arm portion of the boom and that would can't start from this block to this block this block so this section here is 10 blocks this would be 10 on the x then we have one two on the positive y we don't count this section down here because this isn't part of the operation this is just a free swinging gizmo that we're going to play with later this allows us to move into what might be the complicated part of the whole process here we're going to be setting up what I like to refer to as section, subsection. For the hydraulic part, it comes first in this whole build order. We have variables set up to run this whole process into a subgrid, or a, rather a subsection of our little script we're writing. Now, this H1, H2, HS1 can be whatever you want. Actually, let's change this to a two. I was testing to see if it really did make a difference, which it does not. Now that we've got hydraulic one and hydraulic two, which is our one piston and two piston, we can add their solid in on a large grid, which is the LG, and we're gonna have that for a two. Now we have to define the hydraulic, which will always be written as variable, whatever you want, equals new hydraulic. That is a requirement. And next we define the actuator. This is the movement section of the hydraulic, which is actually piston one plus piston two plus the solid, notated by H1, H2, HS1, these right here. Now we want this to work on the mouse, so we went with one. We want this to work on the up and down, so we went with Y on the Y axis. And that's just because of the way the rotors and the pistons are placed together, technically puts it into the Y. Here, we enter in our digits for the tangent, which will be six asterisk LG, obviously because we're working on a large grid. This would be SG or a small grid setup or anything like that. The normal or normal one rather is two. Let me just jump out of here. We're going to go over here and go over this one more time. Here is tangent one, which is on the Z, normal one, which is down here on the X, and tangent two, which is on the X. Normal two could literally be anywhere, as long as it is offset from this rotor here. Like I said earlier, very rarely would that happen unless you were getting super, super creative. Back into our program block, we are now at the section to define the solid for the boom portion of the arm. And if you remember, that was 10x to y. 
With that completed, we now move into what makes us spin left and right. This is a dirty way of writing this portion, but it is simple. It works, but there are a few things that you have to do to make it work smoothly. If you wanted this to go all in one function, you would have to call another subsection for this rotor, which is some more advanced stuff that we'll be covering later on. I'm not 100% on this part just yet. So we have a band-aid until I learn that and create an advanced programming video for the script. And that is this. Simply put, we drop it in as a variable, we give it its solid, and then we add it to the arm. Now, what makes doing the variable section of this so complicated is you have to do a mathematical calculation that follows the order of operation in order to get the arm to operate correctly, to recognize each part in the arm. And we did that this time simply by taking the variable of the hydraulic, which contains all of these variables here, so we don't have to use all of those. We can sum it up into one go here. We bring it here. Then we take the solid of that boom section and place it next. Then we add the rotor and the rotor solid. Once that is complete, we are done. Now there will be a video coming out explaining the more advanced portions of how to set up those mathematical calculations because there's some interesting ways of doing things depending on where your placement is for your rotors and pistons. And I'm sorry I'm kind of stopping in between words. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, a really long day and I, I want to get this video out for you guys. Now that all that's done, it's time for us to set up a few things that I talked about earlier. One, we want to come into our control panel. We want to find our pistons and maybe not that much strength. We'll come down to about right here for that. We want to make sure they're shared on the uh, inertia tensor and we just want to uh, add them to a quick group. Next up, we want to grab our rotors, all the advanced rotors that are going to be swinging. We want to share inertia tensor. We want no torque and we want no braking torque. The reason there was braking torque there earlier is to set up the connection. Now, if you have a question about how to link grids, put that in the comments below. I will answer it or I could even provide links to other videos or make a video myself. Actually, let me know in the comments below if you would prefer me to explain it to you in the comments or make a video showing how to link two separate grids together to form one grid. With the setup of the rotors out of the way, the next thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna ensure that there are cockpit that is arm controller, which this one does already. Then we wanna go into our g grab the group or the piston, and we wanna set this to where it can turn on and off. Next, we'll have a rotor lock or the rotor one, which does the spinning. Now with this setup, depending on where the arm is, oh, and we'll do that by first locking the first the rotor. As you can see, it's got a little bit of wobble to it. So one of the things we can do, come in here, grab our pistons, and let's lower the strength a bit more. Finding the balance for the strength of the pistons versus everything else is what really makes this, that's, that's a lot smoother right there. Now we're gonna lock those pistons. Now that we have the pistons locked, they can no longer affect the movement of our little rig here. This is just something we have to do to be able to use a hydraulic arm in any type of build situation. And there are ways of making this so you can pop it up if you really want to do that. But general purposes, you don't really want to. You just want something simple, something powerful, to be able to lift up whatever you want to lift. Now, depending on the orientation of the drill arm, or not, not the drill arm, the boom arm, the way your mouse controls the left and right changes. So when the arm is low to the ground, left goes left, right goes right. However, when the arm is more centered, 
Here go left. Left goes left, right goes right, but you see we've slowed down. We go up a bit more. Now left goes right and right goes left. You max out the height. Left goes right, right goes left. That is just an orientation issue that is related to this being a dirty code, so to speak. All right, let's lock her arm. Let's unlock her rotor, unlock her arm, and we'll send this puppy home. While that is going home, let me grab something here. Something for us to just play with a little bit. Oh, gee. We'll put one of these there, and we'll put another one of these here. Or rather, they're the same thing, so it's fine. Now, before we do this little bit of fun this year, if this video has been helpful in any way, hit that like button. This helps the channel, this helps the video, especially the video. It, it will help it be seen by other people who may need this information or want it. Also, if you've enjoyed the video so far, consider subscribing. Along with my Space Engineers survival series, where we put some of these theories and things into a survival perspective and build them in survival, I'll have more guides coming soon on many of the scripts that I use in that series. Now, it's time to play with this thing. We need to ease it down a bit. I still haven't got the ratios set up the way I want. We'll change the locks out here. Let's spin this around and let's grab ourselves a clangerang. And I think about there, maybe we'll do it. We really need to ease it down now. All right, so the landing gear is set to auto lock and we have it. Let's just pick this up quite gently light. And I think about right there is a good height. Well, let's try taking it up a little bit more so we can get a better spin. No, no, break it down a little bit more. Yeah, buddy. All right. Okay, let me get, let me get my orientation here figured out. Okay, so we go like that. And if we spin her really fast and turn the lock off, the clanger ring goes wild. <laughs> But all right, if you guys found this video entertaining, please hit that like button so that it helps the channel, it helps the growth, everything is helped and happiness and YouTube related funness. But as always, when in doubt, Robar.